Today I'll be showing you how to use your iPad and the Sims and apps inside as audio units or VST instruments in your DAW. In this case I'm using Logic Pro 10. For example, if you see I have three Sims opened up uh, inside my iPad 2. I have Arctic Keys. Then I have Nlog Pro Synth. And finally, I have Arctic Pro Synth. Okay, so I also have it connected to a Q25 keyboard, like in my Ableton Live video. I'm just going to show you. See? So when I play on my keyboard, it's playing the synth on my iPad. Okay, that's really cool. And the sound is coming out from, I have Mbox Pro connected to my iMac computer. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to record a little section to show you what I can do with the media data. Then I'm going to show you how to do this. So if I hit record, as you can see I recorded in all the media data including velocity as well as the notes inside the piano roll. And you can also edit it as if you're a real VST instrument. I could change the velocity. I could change, uh, I could transpose it by semitones. Change the area where the notes are placed. I can also quantize uh, as if you're, you know, an instrument plugin and draw notes as well. Better yet, I can even add some pitch bend and modulation and it records the data in as well. see I'm going to zoom in. You can see that the pitch and modulation data is recorded in as well. Also, if you go down to the piano roll, you can see I'm going to go to pitch bend. And you can see where the pitch bends um, at the bottom. That's the media information that's sent and recorded into my doll. As well as the modulation. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, first thing you need is the iConnect Mini 2 Plus. Uh, you need this little device and you can get it online or in the store it's only about sixty dollars us so it's pretty cheap there's also the four plus but you know unfortunately it isn't out yet it has a new technology called audio pass through uh, which sends the the media information from your ios device into your DAW. it comes with a 30 pin connector um, i'm using the ipad 2 so it's compatible but if you have the new iPad Mini or you have an iPad Air, then you need an 8-pin. Uh, you can buy, you know, a 30-pin to 8-pin adapter in the store. And then you can get it to work that way. You don't have to use an iPad. You can use, I mean, an iPhone if you want. Then I have an Mbox Pro interface, and I have a Q25 Mini keyboard controller. But these two things are optional. I mean, 
you could play the keyboard, you know, on the iPad, and for the sound, you could just use the built-in inputs and outputs for your computer. Okay, um, you could check out my Ableton Live video if you're using Ableton Live. So let's get started. You plug port two, the USB port two, into your computer, and then don't connect uh, port one to your iPad yet. Port one is for your iPad, you know. By the way. Then you go to your computer. I'm gonna get a better view and angle so you can see. Okay, zoom in. In your computer, you're gonna go ahead and open up Audio MIDI Setup. Uh, this is the audio window. If you can't see it, uh, go to Audio MIDI Setup at the top. Next to View, there's Window. Press on Window, and uh, sh well, right now it's Hide Audio Window, but Show Audio Window. It'll come up. If you see this little plus sign at the bottom of the window, bottom left left hand side, you press on that and create aggregate device. Then what you do is uh, you select the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus and you select the ins and the outs. Uh, you could go ahead, if you don't have the interface, select built-in input, built-in output. If you do have interface, select your interface. In this case, it's the Mbox Pro. And to make things less confusing, um, I would rename it, you know, instead of aggregate device, you can name it something else. Okay, so when you open up your Logic Pro 10, you should see a window asking you for, you know, what kind of track you want to create. Uh, go ahead and select an audio track. Select input 1. For the output, select output 3 and 4, and then hit create. Then we're going to open up three external MIDI tracks. So we're going to go ahead and select external MIDI. For the output, select the third port, which is USB 2.3. The other ports won't work, so uh, you can only select 2.3. It's set to 2.3 as default. If you want to use the other ports, you have to download the software and program it yourself. Then for the MIDI channel, you can hit uh, 1, select it as MIDI channel 1. For the number of tracks, go ahead and enter 3, since we're creating 3. And the audio track is for you to monitor uh, your sounds while you're playing on your iPad screen or on your MIDI keyboard controller in real time or any other MIDI device that you're using with iConnect MIDI. And the three audio tracks are to represent three synths on my iPad. Um, I like to organize it you know, according you know, to the MIDI channels. So the first external MIDI track will be uh, configured as my Arctic Pro synth on MIDI input channel 1. The second one will be Nlog Synth Pro on MIDI Input Channel 2, and the third one will be Arctic Keys on MIDI Input Channel 3. So I can go uh, switch in between the sounds when I have these external MIDI tracks selected. Okay, next thing we do, we're going to go to Preferences and your Logic Pro uh, settings, and then under Audio Devices, Core Audio Enabled. For the output and input device, select the Aggregate Device that we created earlier in the video. Uh, remember you can name it whatever you like. Don't get it confused. It's going to ask you if you want to connect to iConnect BD2+. Um, ignore it. Don't connect to that. And select the aggregate device you named. Uh, you can see I have a lot of aggregate devices here. The one I used is iConnect BD2+, in lowercase. So select that for input and output devices. Uh, since we're going to monitor the sounds, I suggest a lower buffer setting around you know 256 or 128 or 64 32 if your computer can handle it then go to IO assignments and have output 3 and 4 selected because 1 and 2 are taken up already and then we're gonna finally uh, connect our iPad to that connect MIDI device so as you can see uh, connect the iPad to port 1 the first port here And then the other side, connect the 30 pin to your iPad. Okay, uh, once you have it connected, you shouldn't be able to hear any sound. That's perfectly normal. That just means your iPad is connected to the aggregate device. And I didn't input monitor. Um, I didn't select the input monitoring so you won't be able to hear anything. 
Okay, then we're going to open up the three synths and uh, Arctic Pro Synth. We're going to go to Preferences. Make sure the background audio is selected on all your synths. Then we're going to go to MIDI. Make sure it's on MIDI channel 1. Um, for the ports, have it tracked as the USB 1.3 for the inputs as well as the outputs. Okay, so that's the first synth. Now for the second synth, we're going to go to Analog Pro. Background mode on. Uh, for the devices, we selected as ICM 2.3 USB. Selected as in. Uh, then go to MIDI. And have it set to channel 2. Then we're going to go to the third synth, Arctic Keys. Go to Preferences. Make sure background audio is on. Go to MIDI. Okay, set to MIDI channel 3. And USB 1.3 is tracked as the inputs and the outputs. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to go back into Logic. I'm going to turn on the input monitoring for the audio track. Okay, and then on the side, we're going to open up this tab here that displays the the settings for the MIDI, for the external MIDI, and leave it on GM device. Uh, since it's the first external MIDI track, we're going to select channel 1, go to the second one, and select it as channel 2, the third one, channel 3. Okay, so now um, when I select the first external MIDI track and play on my keyboard, you should hear uh, Arctic Pro Synth. Now when I go to the second device, you should hear Analog Pro Synth. And the third device, you should hear Arctic Keys. And the pitch bend and the modulation wheel works. I mean, in any other knob, if you uh, map it to the patch on your iPad synth. Actually, I would recommend you to uh, rename your external media tracks, you know, instead of GM device. Can name it as I'm gonna name it as Arctic Pro Synth. Second one would be Analog Pro, and third one would be Arctic Keys. So you know you don't get confused, you don't get lost, and not know what synth is on what external MIDI track. Okay, I'm just gonna record something really simple to show you that it's all working. Okay, so that's Arctic Pro Synth, and we're going to go ahead and select Analog Pro, and record something. Okay, and then Arctic Keys. Okay, so there we have it. We have all the uh, MIDI tracks recorded. And as you can see, when I click on the regions and the, the MIDI regions, you can see the MIDI data underneath it. The piano roll, and modulation, pitch, velocity. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, when I play it back, you can hear it's all recorded. Okay, so if you have any other questions, feel free to leave me a message or a comment, uh, and don't forget to subscribe. Um, that's about it. Thanks for watching.